Hey guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. I'm doing a worm test now on chips or fries, depending where you're from. But they're um, potato um, junk food, I guess a lot of people would put it under the category of. These aren't from a major um, a major takeaway chain. These are from a local milk bar, a local fish and chip shop, and a shout out to Tony, our local fish and chippery guy. Um, He's graciously supplied, supplied these samples for me. Now, I was recently reminded by a worm friend of mine, a worm enthusiast, Stacy. thanks Stacy, that I did promise that I would do a comparison with chips on my worms, and the comparison is really concerning salt. Just to see what salt does, it's generally accepted that salt's not good for your worms, but this experiment will just show what actually eventuates and I have noticed a kind of a, a greenish mold that I think is associated with salt so our samples here are these are raw uncooked chips I'll call them chips because that's what we call them in Australia uh, and in fact they're still frozen they're straight out of Tony's freezer and he said sometimes the commercial chips are pre-salted these ones aren't so there's no salt they should be just pure potato so that's sample number one Number two is how he serves them up, nicely uh, fried up. And I'm, I think he uses a kind of vegetable oil. I didn't quite catch what he said it was, but whatever a lot of um, fish and chip shops use, I'd say that's what he uses. And they're nice golden brown. They're generally beautiful chips. We don't eat chips anymore because they're high in carbs, but people that like chips, I know, like them from Tony's. So they're cooked in some sort of oil, but unsalted. And we have exactly the same sample here, but they've got salt on them. So this particular testing spot is a, a small half tank I use. It's kind of my lazy worm farm, and I'll put a link up the top to explain what that is. But basically it means that it's where I tip stuff that I don't have time to deal with. You can see there's been some shredded paper in here. I've just dug it over. There was quite a lot of little worms in here. It was a bit dry, so I've given it a bit of a water. But there were lots of... Lots of worms, a lot of little ones in here, feeding away on oh, all sorts of stuff that's been in here. As I said, it's where I tip a lot of the excess. So I know it's a good population of worms. Uh, I've dampened it down a bit. It should be a good test for these chips. I'm going to put a, I found an old um, hessian bag and I've dampened it down. So I'll put that over the top and I'll also put some carpet. I'll keep it damp as I usually do. And we'll do a, a check in a week and see what's going on. One week later, time to check out this uh, salted chip experiment. I'll just put a huge big um, quilt over the top here. It's an old bedspread. It's probably a polyester or something. But um, the idea is that this, this spot is actually in the middle of the yard. It's not directly under a tree. And it does cop a lot of sun. So this just helps keep it damp. And you see I've got the carpet mats under here and it's certainly staying damp because I've got a few worms on top of the carpet. So let's see if there's been any action. Remember we put this little uh, hessian bag over as well. So they should be staying quite, uh, quite damp and out of the heat. So there's worms on the hessian. Let's dig in and see what's been going on with the potato. Well, look at that. They're into that straight away. Now those were the salted ones. So maybe there wasn't enough salt on there because it certainly hasn't affected the worms. But look at this, there's there's little green patches of mould. There's also ants there too. Maybe the ants are carrying the salt away. But yeah, there's little greeny patches of mould there which I associate with salt. But the worms are in there. There's lots of springtails, there's lots of ants. Look at the worms on these raw potato ones. So they're much more into that. And the other ones, they're into that as well. Beautiful. So there's no issues with the chips being cooked in, a, in an oil or a fat. They look like they're being attacked exactly the same. This is only seven days in. But the ants are certainly eating chips. That's interesting. The ants have nearly tunneled out that chip. But the worms are coming in to eat them as well. And there's certainly a lot less worms. In fact, the few that we hear have disappeared. So there's a certainly a marked difference there from the salt to the unsalted 
and the unsalted and the raw were much the same. They're all starting to disappear now because it's pretty warm here and they've tunnelled into the cool soil. So I'll check it again in another week and I might just follow up this experiment with a couple of samples again and we'll try a little bit more salt or maybe chicken salt because I don't really know how much salt actually got put on these chips and it didn't really deter the worms although that was the least uh, populated sample. Anyway, we'll cover it back over. We'll check it in another week and um, if I can get my hands on a few more chips we might follow up with just a heavily salted and then an unsalted sample. But anyway, they seem to be enjoying that. Potato looks like it's a winner. We'll see you next week. So here we go again for another check on these potato chips with and without salt. It's been exactly one week again. And we had lots of rain the other day. We had um, really good rain nearly all day, so there shouldn't be any moisture troubles. Okay. Looks like the worms are actually starting to eat our hessian bag, which is to be expected. But let's get underneath that and see what's going on with the chips. Well, that's where the salted ones were. In fact, look at that. I can't see a single chip. That's two weeks. Um, we have... I think it's the remains of a chip there and there's little springtails in there. I forgot to bring my scratcher with me. But the worms have... Um, have demolished the chips totally. So I'll give this a bit of a rake over. Hang on, I'll just go and find my rake. Okay, let's have a little bit of a scratch. There's lots of little springtails in there. I can't see the ants. I think the ants have gone. Plenty of worms in there. Where was this other sample? Lots of worms there. Oh, more. there's more worms there than the other spot. And I don't know what that is. It looks like a Christmas light or something get rid of that and the other spot here that's yeah there's plenty of worms in there too but these chips have totally demolished totally gone not a skerrick left and there may have been just a few little bits on this pile so given that that's cleaned up i'll just break this around given that there's no samples left at all and the salt didn't seem to have any impact i'm going to follow up and round up some more chips today and we'll do a little bit more of an intensive test because I'm sure salt isn't good for the worms but I just wanted to see what happened and that first test really didn't give us much of a view I'll be back soon so for the extension of this chip salt experiment we're going to use this compost bin and I've got another big bed spread over the top of this to keep it cool now this compost bin has kind of turned into a worm farm because they've just moved in and um, pretty well. I had heaps of lettuce in here that I got from the bakery and I put this watermelon half in here the other day. Let's have a look under, oh look at that. They love watermelon, that's just phenomenal. Anyway, there's lots of worms in here. So I'm gonna do this chip extension test in this one because I don't know that we've got ants in here and the ants took most of the chips away on the last one. So I've just been back up to Tony's and we've got three samples this time again. So that one is cooked chips with chicken salt. And you can see the chicken salt on there. There's lots of it. So this should be a decent test. Hopefully the, the worms don't like the salt, they will disappear quick smart. Then we have in this other bag, we have cooked chips again with normal salt. And again, I said, you know, don't be, don't be squeamish on the salt. Give it a good shake. So that's another good sample of salted chips. And one could say the worms have been assaulted. And this last bag is, as we did in the last go, this is just normal chips, no salt at all. So there we go. So without further ado, we'll cover that one over. We're due for a lot more rain again tomorrow, and that the um, large bedspread helps stopping the the thing be getting basically drenched with water. Uh, it'll be a good spot, a good test this hope, this time. Hopefully, we don't get the ants come back in. So we'll put the quilt down, and we'll check it in a week's time. Next inspection of this test, 
we'll see what's going on with these freshly salted chips I haven't been here for exactly one week and holy macaroni look at that who gives a toss about salt hey I don't think it's making any difference that's just incredible I wasn't expecting that that's just one big huge ball of worms and that was one of the salted tests that's like the size of a cricket ball or worms this one as well uh, look there are some chips on top here these were the chicken salt ones they've gone moldy there is a bit of that slightly greenish mold there but there's an equally as large a ball of worms here that's actually I reckon slightly bigger so there's the remaining chips they might have had, may have had the most uh, sorry they may have had the most salt on them they're still being eaten and the ones without salt hang on what do we got here oh yeah that's more worm, more chips and these ones are absolutely buried look at that this is more than a cricket ball this is a football amount of worms so if that was without salt but the ones with salt and there was a fairly a fairly substantial pile of salt there and the worms do not seem to care so whilst the chemical issues with salt probably are factual I don't doubt them you, know, you certainly wouldn't purposely put salt in your worms they really seem to be able to handle it that's just massive amounts I didn't know there was that many worms in this this is a compost bin not a worm farm so that's just amazing a lot of little ones too there's not many really big thick ones so there you go uh, my conclusions well salt perhaps isn't as nasty as what it's made out to be although that's a bit of a rash statement I suppose perhaps we did have a heavy rain perhaps it leached a lot of the salt away but um, you know a little bit of salt on food you don't need to rinse it off it's not that critical uh, as long as your worm farm's got enough moisture in it it looks like it's not going to cause any issues at all now remember that this is a large bin and it sits on the ground so the worms are free to disappear if they don't like things but this has only been a week from a handful of chips that I could have actually eaten to a handful of worms that I'm not going to eat but but you get the point look in such a quick time the salt didn't make hardly any difference and there was a fair amount of salt on there so look I won't go on you've seen the results um, be careful with salted foods but it's not absolutely diabolical if you have high salt content in some things and I've had good success with bread and I know bread has a lot of salt in it as well so there you go draw your own conclusions thanks for watching I'm really impressed with this quantity of worms I probably shouldn't keep raking them around they won't be liking that all right we'll catch you in the next video bye